Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Tim, and welcome to Tim Talks. The show that's only partially a show, but really is just an excuse for me to talk to some of my very talented friends. And the guy making fun of me over there is part three of our look at the newest achievement hunters, Caden Jensen. Welcome, sir. Greetings. Not oh. to be confused with Adam Jensen, and yes, Caden is your real name, and all of the other jokes that we're going to get through throughout yeah. the show. I figure yeah. we'll go ahead and front pack all of that shit that, and get it out you. of the way. Let's get rid of that first. Yeah. So, uh, speaking of stuff we want to go ahead and get out of the way, well, how about you give us a little Reader's Digest version of what you do over at Achievement Hunter? Uh, what don't I do at Achievement Hunter? Um, <clears throat> that, may be, I, that may be the shorter list. Yeah, you're that's, correct. That's the, that's the much shorter list. Um, I do a lot of the scheduling. You don't anything, that comes out, anything that comes out in a certain week, um, I'm kind of behind what comes out when. Aside mm -hmm. from GTA, that's the only thing I don't have my fingers in. But uh, Minecraft... Scheduling what Let's Plays come out on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Right. Uh, uh, filming versus... Like, as far as what episodes? Like, you have the structure already set out. Yes. But as far as which actual, you know, Top Chef Part 1 goes here, and then you skip a week, skip a week, yep. skip a week, Park Chef yep. Part 2. Exactly. Yeah. All that's, all that's managed by me, and it gets daunting when we, one, have a lot of content... Mm -hmm. And even more stressful when we need to record a tremendous amount of content because we haven't in a while. Right. Or because you are need to, needing to stockpile because people are going away on vacation or to film a movie. Or to do whatever it is that you guys do outside of the actual recording. Because the recording process, most people don't even really think about the fact that that is the smallest portion of work that goes into the videos. It's not wrong. Usually... Um, uh, Time-wise. Time-wise. Time, yeah, no. Time-wise time generally... Uh, any Let's Play that's not, say, Minecraft or GTA is mm -hmm. something that it's like, okay, hey, this game came out. How many players can we get into it? Uh, who do we want to be in this? And when can we film it when everybody's not busy? Because even internally, uh, we lose Ryan for the patch occasionally. Yeah. Uh, Gavin might be filming a slow-mo. Uh, Michael might be asked to do something. Like, there was a lot of filming for Ten Little Roosters before we got to uh, Laser Teams filming. Yeah. And we lost... Uh, Gavin, Michael, Lindsay, and Ryan for about two weeks before we lost Michael and Gavin to Laser Team for several weeks. So scheduling all of that was a nightmare. Yeah, I'd imagine so. So you get all of it stockpiled, you get all of it organized, you get it all into the calendar. Are you one of those people who are naturally organized? Like, was that kind of an easy role for you to slip into? Uh, yeah, more or less. I've always liked to have uh, all my things nicely put together. That doesn't necessarily translate into putting all of my things away where they yeah. should be all the time. But as far as on paper is concerned, yeah, I'm pretty organized. Are, does that translate into other things as well? Or I mean, how? I guess what I'm trying to get at is how did the skills that you cultivated outside of working at Achievement Hunter help at Achievement Hunter? Um, I'm going to tell you right now, the probably the best thing for like organization's sake and trying to figure out how to do something actually came from playing a tremendous amount of RPGs because it kind of forced me to be like, okay, I need to go and beat this boss, but I need to have these skills and these subsets to do all this. Right. But to do all that first, I need to do this and I need to do that. So it's like, well, I'll just make a checklist and I'll do all that. And like, oh, I see. Video games can help you people. It's, yeah. it's, it's very true. It's one of those things where if you realize the amount of, of skill and organization and effort that can go into, say, like doing a big raid dungeon in WoW, for example. Absolutely. Uh, you sit there and you get everything together. You figure out what you need in order to be able to obtain the loot that you want. Guess what? You've just made a checklist for what you need to do in real life. It's like, very true. Here's all of the education and skills and relevant uh, experience that I need. And here's the end goal, which is the job that I want. School is unnecessary. Just play WoW, Final Fantasy, and a couple other things, and you'll understand everything. I mean, hey, if you want to find shiny Pokemon, you'll need to understand math. Are, uh, di are you a college guy? Uh, I, yeah, uh, yes, you should go to college. Yes, I went to college. No, I'm not going back. <laughs> Fair enough. Did, did you just get a, uh, an undergrad degree, or did you go full, I was, full grad? I was going to, I'm about 30 credits away from full grad, but I stopped because the field that I was going into Kind of went belly up. Really? What field was that? I was gonna be uh, I was gonna be a teacher, and then the education everything kind of exploded. Oh yeah. 
of the teacher strikes and then there was the pay cuts and then there was the no benefits and then there was the overcrowding in schools and I'm like yeah I'm just gonna call it quits with my associates and uh figure out the rest from here yeah well are you um are you one of those creative people who feels like that pull of if I'm not making a thing I'm kind of dying inside uh definitely to a degree uh I, I... I like making content. Uh, one of the things that I always wanted to do is I wanted to uh, either be in acting or voice acting or, or some sort of content producing. I was always interested in uh, in TV stations and all the behind the scenes stuff. I was actually uh, in charge of videography for a church for a while and I ran the video sorcher for that. So every once in a while when I have time, I go and I, I stock the podcasts and so, Rather than paying attention to what's on the screen and what everybody's watching, yeah, I'm watching all the switchers. You're, the, the you're doing dial. the producer role. We'll come back like to that, that in just a moment because I know that sounds like an unrelated question that I just asked. I worked at a job like that where I wasn't doing anything creative, where I wasn't making anything, I wasn't performing for people, and I ju it just physically hurt, you know. And it just so, it's, it, it's tedium, is what it is. Yeah. And and it's it's one of those things where you feel like you have worked so hard to get um, a certain skill set behind you, and yeah. you don't get to use all of it, and it makes time feel like it's going to waste. And no, it's it's very true. And uh, that, that's that's, that's kind of why I like working at Achievement Hunter is because even down to the minute little details. I mean, you might not think of it too much watching the content, but there's probably about thirty minutes just deciding what little font goes in the top right hand corner or yeah. where the font or where the name burn actually goes i mean yeah uh for the vindictus let's play i probably had three or four different positions that i wanted to put the the font in but there was only one place that made it work across particularly everybody well so that everybody could see so it's like okay you can see everything else that's on screen and you can see that this is obviously this character played by this person yeah and it's interesting the what different ways you can go through and delineate stuff like that. There are some games where it's easier to just have the static uh, everybody across because it has the like Smash Brothers, for example, has yes. four people across the bottom, and so it's easy to just put a permanent nameplate. Worms yep. is another. Worms, one is, we... Worms is really good. Yeah, for, especially because in, in certain games you don't necessarily need name burns. Like uh, there was, I think we did Wrecked where we didn't have name burns and everybody was just colors and everybody had their names on the side already. Mm -hmm. Worms is again like that. Everybody has a color and they have a team name and they say their entire team. It's just like, oh, you know, this yeah. person is this person and that person is that person. And it's very easy to get to. But uh, a lot of the first person stuff, especially since GTA switched to first person and we've been filming a lot in first person, it's hard to understand whose hands are these and why am I looking at their hands. Right. Right. So the because name burn you, is absolutely necessary. You can't see the full costume anymore. Right. And that kind of became one of the more iconic things. Speaking of Ten Little Roosters, that kind exactly. of carries over. That was actually kind of, that was a, that was definitely one of those things. Uh, Josh Flanagan came in. It's just like, what can we put in Ten Little Roosters that's achievement hunter related, but isn't super obviously achievement hunter related, but mm -hmm. will get fans to go, oh, that's a thing. And uh, a lot of it came from little nods to uh, why, how, why a character did this particular thing yeah. or, um, say, Ryan getting trapped in the hole is one of those things. And uh, Ryan's show, costume, of course. That show turned out so fantastically. Oh, it's, like, it's, I, oh, I love the caliber of work that's coming out of Rooster Teeth right now. And it, Ten Little Roosters is probably one of my favorite things that I've gotten to see go from zero to a hundred percent completed yeah in my span of being here for a year yeah just because um when josh was talking about the idea he's like oh i'm gonna do this murder mystery thing and it's just like well okay you're you're gonna do a murder mystery thing with the talent of a uh, bunch of different people who don't necessarily work together on projects on camera all the time right so it was very interesting to get them to you Script to get or not, to get to work together. And a lot of it uh, was pretty interesting. I mean, sitting there and watching them film it was really interesting. And how he handled some of the shots was just mm -hmm. really cool. Well, the interesting thing about that is because it's kind of based on their actual personalities, if the chemistry is a little awkward, that's what it's going to be naturally. 
So sure. it kind of works towards the scene. As long as you have a director who is able to kind of work that avenue and be very careful about keeping that balance of keeping everyone natural and yet comfortable, it works fantastically. And it's, uh, it's, it's, it's th- really funny. I think Josh pulled it off well. We had no, him on uh, I, right after iBlade, and he was just at that point beginning to cultivate the ideas that would become Ten Little Roosters. And oh my God. Oh. It's Some of the like, scenes are just hilarious, and the behind-the-scenes stuff is just... Yeah, I've, I've got to talk to him the other day about some of the stuff that's coming up. Oh, he, t- <laughs> he told me about that puma. When the he told- puma was hilarious. I got to see, and um, it I'm was... So, I'm uh, so glad that now that episode's out so that I don't feel bad saying that. <laughs> uh, who was... Uh, I think Paco was in the puma suit, uh-huh. and poor Paco was on his hands and knees crawling around trying to get all those perfect shots at for probably about two hours and that suit got hot I'll plus bet. it was filmed when things were starting to get cold yeah so it's hot in the office and it's hot in the suit and <laughs> Paco was a trooper but the work that comes out shows obviously uh and so getting back to the actual process that you guys go through l- let's walk through like from choosing the game to editing to putting out to fan reception how does that entire process go through uh, it's one of those things that generally if we can get six players into a game, we're mm-hmm. going to focus on that game more often than not. Uh, such as the case of GTA, which is one of those staples that people have come to expect from Achievement Hunter. Right. The other is Minecraft, which again, it's very obvious that Minecraft is the focal point of Achievement Hunter and it cultivates as the end show of the week is like, hey, here's the TGIF, can't wait for it, here it is, enjoy kind of a thing. Yeah. But... It's the middle stuff that becomes a little gray. Uh, Whether it's going to be popular or whether it's going to be fun to play or whether it's going to come across as uh, an enjoyable experience both to watch and to play. Mm -hmm. Like, there's a lot of games that people are like, this game is fun to play, but it's not as fun to watch. Uh, I know some people feel that way about the Assassin's Creed series, but then, you know, some series that... uh, you wouldn't necessarily think of like like the Far Cry co-op that's been going on with uh, Jeff and Ryan. It was one of those things that they can't do the story. They can do everything else. Yeah. So how long can you keep that going for? But people have responded really well to it. And the episodes are... It's something usually, different. You know, it's, it's like the long. Evolve yeah. Alpha where you had four on one. And, and that was something different. Anytime you can kind of change up the dynamic a little bit, the new Super Mario Brothers Wii U episodes. Yes. Anytime you can throw a wrench into those works, I think it works really well. Yep. That's generally... When we figure out that we can cause chaos in a game, mm-hmm. whether it be intended or not, <laughs> it's just so much fun. Yeah. Like when, uh, when Jeff discovered the depth of the Far Cry like level creator and multiplayer map creator... We sat there for probably about an hour between uh, Matt, Jeff, and I just sitting there like, oh, can you do this? Can you do this? At one point, we uh, took an elephant, placed it as high as we could into the skybox, spawned the character at the bottom at the beach, and waited to see if the elephant would come crashing down. (laughs) Unfortunately for us, there was no hilarity in it because once it got to the ground, it saw that it was about two or three feet away and velocity slowed. So it got this oh. really good speed and then it just went boop. And it's like, oh, well, that was disappointing. Anticlimactic. That could have been Operation Dumbo Drop Part 2. And you know what? It would have been great. That's actually what we were going to we were going to call it Operation <laughs> Dumbo Drop of <laughs> some sort or something like that. But. You got to. You got to. But from that came uh, the things to do RAR, which was just, as it's like, how many lions and tigers and, and all these crazy murderous animals can we put into a straight line and still make it doable? <laughs> and we were all pretty surprised that Jack did it in about two minutes. Yeah. So it's like, nope, things to do done. <laughs> It's crazy the the weird talents that you can find doing stuff like that. You realize suddenly that that uh, Gavin is really good at well, I don't know what Gavin's really good at. Michael's really good at certain <laughs> game kinds of games. Ray's really good at shooters. You know that sort of thing. Gavin's particularly good at Hitman games, but we really haven't had the ability to showcase that. Yeah, unfortunately. 
Uh, so once you pick the game and do the recording process, which as we already talked about, is kind of the shortest thing. What happens to the footage? The footage gets all dumped into a particular folder and uh, that goes with the audio as well. Mm -hmm. And all of that is raw. So it's incredibly large and very difficult to work with in the raw. How big uh, is your average uh, raw fi video file size? For about an hour worth of recording, it's generally about 20 gigs per person. Jesus. It's because we capture at uh, true 1080 and lossless. Yeah. Regardless of anything else, everything goes through and it go becomes a lossless 1080. After that, we name burn everything and move it into a more manageable format. And that's when the editing process actually begins. Of course, people are more than likely familiar with the one, two, threes, but what the one, two, three is, in case you've heard it, is the audio rolls, the video's rolling, and to sync everything up, it's kind of like uh, the clapboard for uh, a movie where you just go. Exactly. But it's harder to do that in a game. Uh, for older games, where there's no necessary menu, a lot of people will jump and be like, jump, jump, jump. But for the Xbox games, and this is why the Xbox 360 arguably has the best system for it, you bring up the guide and you go, and you one, know, one, two, three, one, two, three. One, two, three. And it's that simple. Uh, and you have to do it every time. You have because... to do it. If, yeah, if the audio stops and you start the audio again, the video can keep going, but at that point, everybody needs to stop, everybody needs to resync and then get back into it, which sometimes when that happens, it'll break the flow of everything. Mm -hmm. So everyone will take a break and then come back into it. Yeah. Because whew, when, when you get a good recording in and things don't go well near the end of it, and you're going to have to do another section of it, you get that sense of everything was good up until that point and all of the momentum, all of the comedy, all of the tension gets derailed. Just crash, screeching halt. It's a crash and burn scenario, but yeah. we're kind of used to that in a sense that anything that can go wrong with Let's Play recording generally does. Yeah. And uh, there's usually comedy in it. Like if you leave in all the parts when Gavin desyncs and then has to do it again and everybody laughs at him, ah, ha, ha, Gavin fucked up again. It's technical failure. He can't help that. But no, you can turn it into true. something. Yeah, so there's, there's definitely some some funny moments, especially uh, when we got to using the technical difficulty screen. People love the technical difficulty screen. I don't know why. I guess they just like seeing the fact that something went wrong. And ha, ha, ha. Yeah, I mean, it's just, it's the seeing the man behind the curtain, you know, it's. it's... Um, the current Let's Play that's going to be coming out on Friday uh, was the Minecraft, the first Minecraft that we were filming on the Hell Day of Achievement Hunter, where we were there for probably about 18 to 19 hours straight, just right. working. Uh, the first half of the day was us recording a bunch of verses and a bunch of go. Then we took a break and they recorded a bunch of GTA. While they were break, uh, while uh, we were breaking from filming the live action, Lindsay, Matt, Jeremy, and I sat and we knew we were going to be there all day, so we binged edit and we edited as much as we possibly could in between every filming. Mm -hmm. Then we got to Minecraft and everybody at that point was pretty burnt out. It was unfortunately probably the fourth or fifth video we recorded that day. Yeah. And that was kind of the big deal one. It's um it started off fine and then after we took our uh, after it was recording for probably about an hour and a half, we stopped. We took a break. We uh, we rested. Everybody took their bathroom break. Took five minutes to decompress right. and refocus themselves and get back into it. And that's when the next four and a half hours come into play. Oh boy! Uh, what turned what started out as let's record part two and finish turned into battling the Xbox One version of Minecraft for the next several hours. Oh. We went from uh, laughing at the failure to furious at the failure, to mind-numbing delirium by the end of it. Yeah, yeah, that usually doesn't go to, like, make for a good recording session. It really can bum people out and get you into a negative headspace, and that's just never fun. Everything that could have gone wrong did, and <sighs> it's one of those things that <sighs> it's kind of funny how it turned out, at the very beginning, Ryan mentions, oh, I wasn't in the original version of this video back in the episode 20s or whatever. Yeah. And he's like, what happened? And 
I think it was Jack who said, we had a lot of technical failure and sure was a lot of fun. It was the original one they had lost all the video and all the audio for when they were about 50% of the way through it. So they had to do it again. Oh. And him saying that may have been the catalyst for everything else that did happen in that video. So he just jinxed it. In part two of that particular video that you will be seeing, which the four and a half hours will be edited down and... Hopefully uh, so. It's it's definitely not going to be a four and a half hour Minecraft Let's yeah. Play, I promise. <laughs> but be prepared for a tremendous amount of technical difficulty screens and lots and lots of screaming. Mind you, for you it'll probably be funny, for the rest of us it was, it was... a night of torment. Yeah. Well, I mean, going through it in the moment is always the worst. It absolutely it's is. It's one of those where a couple of months from now, after the, wo the psychological wounds have healed and psychiatrists have been paid off, you'll actually be able to look back on it and laugh a, a little bit. But, yeah, no, in the moment, it, that sucks. That it's sucks the worst balls. thing. It's, you're in the trenches taking grenades. There's nothing you can do at that point except plug away through. You're already this far in. You've already put three and a half hours into the technical difficulties fuck it what is what is one more hour what's it what's another yeah what's another 30 minutes what's another 40 minutes uh yep. i know at the i think it was about the three hour mark of recording we ordered chinese food <laughs> and the chinese food delivery person got lost for about an hour <laughs> so at the very very end of the night when everything was finally wrapping up and finishing and all was said and done, then at about, I think it was midnight, the Chinese food delivery person showed up and we were like, oh, I'm so sorry. My I didn't God. see the building. I got lost and everything was crazy. So we all sat on the floor. Everything was just completely destroyed. The room was <laughs> the mess. We're just sitting there eating everything. And that's where, um, I think there's a picture of it. I think it was, uh, I think, Caleb tweeted the picture or the Achievement Hunter account tweeted the picture where it was the end of the hell day and you saw uh -huh. all of us just emotionally and physically drained and just digging into food. As, as... It reminds me of the shawarma scene at the end of Avengers. That's a very good analogy. It's absolutely <laughs> perfect. Just everybody's, everybody's disinterested. One person's like, oh yeah, the, the food's good at least. And it's like, yeah, shut up. Shut we up. don't care anymore. Shut up. I've heard your voice too much. And so after all that's done, the editing gets done, then you put it out on the internet for everyone to see, and then the people get to chime in. The and video no longer belongs to you at that point, it belongs to the world. Yeah, the world doesn't necessarily like all the videos, but right. we're pretty proud of everything that we put out. Mm -hmm. I'd imagine so, and especially a lot of the new test shows that you're putting out. Oh, God. Oh. The By new the test way, shows were... Uh, a labor of uh, unrequited love. Yeah. I yeah. I had to sit down and... That's... But every... I mean, here's the thing. That's pilot season. In Hollywood, that is pilot season every fucking year. It's really interesting to see that microcosm of something that goes on every fucking day. Unfortunately, usually for the pilot season, there's several studios working on it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In, in our case, it was about... It was me and Jeff discussing what the show was about. Yeah. Then trying to figure out how we can record all of this on top of everything, everything else yeah. we needed to do. Uh, probably the down to the wire ones were, uh, I know Remix was recorded the day before it was supposed to go out. And I know, gosh, there was a couple like, uh, the Let's Watch of PT, the pilot episode of uh, Let's Watch, was the culmination of three weeks of content. Uh, Jeff yeah. recorded it one week. Then uh, the very yeah. next week, uh, Jack recorded it. Then the next week, Lindsay recorded it because we wanted everybody to come back in with a fresh opinion of it. Right. So it was something that ended up being about, there was about four hours of content in there. That had to be whittled down to what was essentially a 30-minute pilot episode. Yeah. And uh, you lose a lot of stuff, I'd imagine. We definitely lost a lot of stuff in there, but that's where uh, a lot of our other shows came in, especially, you know, we had that show that people didn't necessarily understand, where it was, hey, I swear I've seen this before in an episode, 
but I don't remember this particular scene. Mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure you know what show I'm talking about at this point. Yeah. But uh, a lot of people were very confused by that because it was content that they had consumed before, but not necessarily that chunk of it. Right. Uh, like there was one point that in a video, Michael, in a later video, Michael mentions that he's very happy that the Reedus Fetus joke ended up in something else because it was really funny. And it was. But at the same time, for the sake of that particular Let's Watch where we had three different people going through, what ended up being edited was people's reactions to the same things Mm -hmm. in different shapes and forms. Jeff taking the uh, option of being a complete coward about it, Jack screaming about it, and Lindsay being very inquisitive and trying to poke at it with a stick. Right. And once you get those three views, you kind of have to parse out a little bit of the after of, like, the second statement that happens in Jeff's thing or the first statement that happens in Jack because you're at the second statement in Jack's because of the way the flow has to work just because the video has to match the video that's in the picture by picture. It kind of gives you a, a, not necessarily greater respect, but a greater understanding for the work that goes into some of the face cam ones and just why it's way too much effort. Jesus Christ. It's definitely a pain in the ass and, I know with uh, particularly Go and Versus, we mm-hmm. tend to have a lot of, uh, we, we, we before we had a lot of issues with it because Lindsay and I would record everything on our iPhones. Yeah. And if you know anything about iPhones, they all record in a variable frame rate. And for those of you who don't understand what variable frame rate is, is it means it can go anywhere from 24.94 to 30. Yay, or- <laughs> hooray for editing awfulness. Which causes a problem because when you ed- uh, import things into, say, any editing program, uh, especially the more linear editing programs, variable frame rate tends to fuck everything up, for the lack of a better term. The very- it makes things look glitchy. Like, there's something not quite right that people can't put their finger on, but they know that it's not right. They'll see, like, the mouth move ever so slightly before the words come out. So then we take it, so that adds an additional step to things. And if, say, uh, well, Carrie edits all the ghosts, so he has mm-hmm. generally six screens to, uh, five screens to work with, plus, plus. Two cameras to work yeah. with. And those two cameras are recording at variable frame rate, while all the game footage is recorded at constant frame rate. Oh. So that means that the .MOVs that come from our iPhones have to be conformed into .MP4s that are converted into a constant frame rate, which adds in a, depending on how long the go or versus is, can be about an hour of compression time. But if it's a short one, then it will take 15 or 20 minutes. But still, it's not necessarily a minute to minute ratio for for compressing files. If it's uh, 20 minutes, it doesn't necessarily mean it's gonna take 20 minutes to render. No, it absolutely does not, Jesus. Uh, and hour, I think an, I think uh, the average hour-long episode of Minecraft takes about an two and a half hours to fully render out into 1080p at 60 frames per second. So. I was going to ask, are you got? I have not uh, figured out whether Firefox has adopted the 60 frames a second native yet. Uh, I know Google Chrome does. Have you guys started recording in 60 or exporting uh, in 60? I should say. Uh, we've been recording at 1080 60 since we've got the uh, the new Elgatos, the mm-hmm. the 60 frames per second Elgatos. And for every PC Let's Play we do, everything's recorded in 60 frames per second. However, the recording program that we've been using, and we've been messing with a couple other ones, and it's always trial and error with how things work, because you don't know necessarily what's going to work out better, what's going to work out worse, how are you going to do this, and a lot of it's just kind of like throwing a dart at a board and hoping it hits where you want it to land. We've been using a a PC capture that records at a, a variable frame rate, but the video quality looks immaculate. Like if you saw the the finales uh, of uh, the Smite tournament, everything's recorded in 1080-60, and everything mm-hmm. looks tremendous because it's all very, you know, it's like it's recorded at the native resolution at right. 60 frames per second, but it's High at a bit rate. frame rate. So if it ends up chugging in the game, it ends up chugging in the recording, and it needs to be remastered into a constant frame rate, which... Again, with six people and all the different name burns and making sure everything gets rendered out properly. It It just adds more and more and more and more steps to the process. So what you may see as a 20-minute video may have taken someone anywhere from 12 to 18 hours to edit. Yeah. And the thing is, it's worth it. 
Most uh, of the, the time. Of the, yeah. At the end of the day, when you get that particularly good, satisfying edit, uh, yeah. I could probably say my favorite thing that I've edited anytime recently was probably uh, Sunday Driving. Mm -hmm. It was. It was which, one of those that was the that, one that the the poll picked. Yeah. The poll ended up picking Sunday Driving, which. I say might have been a little bit skewed because it was the thing that they saw last and they were very familiar with it. Right. But then I have to take that back because the thing that got in second place was Let's Watch, which was the, the first, thing. first thing that they saw. So I guess we kind of sandwiched them in between very two very good pieces of bread. Yeah. But as Jeff mentioned, eventually all the shows that you did see in those will be produced. How long that will take me to end up creating? Oh, That's anybody's guess. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of people have been actually been asking is when is Sunday driving actually going to start? Uh -huh. The problem is, is we don't necessarily know when Sunday driving is going to start officially, mostly because we actually just got Gavin and Michael back this Monday. Right. Or yeah, no, uh, this, uh, whatever, whatever date this is. I want to say they finished filming. Saf uh, I think it was Saturday morning at 7 a.m. Saturday morning at 7 a.m. Sounds about right. Yeah. And, that was the end of principal photography for them. So we finally got them back. And of course, they're a little bit fatigued because they just shot a movie and everybody would be really tired. But they came back with a little bit of a freshness to them because they hadn't played a lot of games. I know Michael and Gavin were playing uh, probably the – I think they were playing Master Chief Collection a lot when they're downtime. But that said, it's one of those things that we just got them back. But we're losing everybody again because the holiday the season's holidays. down. So, you know, everybody's like, oh, on Friday, I'm gone for two weeks. On, on Monday, I'm leaving at this time. I'm going to be there for half the day. But it's Right. Like, okay, and then you've so got New Year's. And then hopefully once you get everybody back, it's going to be a thing. But, I mean, you, I, do you guys have stuff squirreled away for the winter? Uh, we definitely had a lot of stuff that we recorded. Uh, all the stuff that we definitely pre-recorded for Minecraft is coming to an end so a lot of the newer stuff that you're going to be seeing coming out uh is going to be stuff that was recorded post laser team not pre laser team right so uh i believe the what we're going to be doing is we're going to have a minecraft episode this week and next week we're going to have one where everybody's back again post laser team and then after that we're going to have a pre laser team minecraft again so it's going to be a very it's going to be a little bit jarring but it's it's, it's going it's to be an interesting to little balancing act <laughs> It's one of those things that it, it kind of puts everything in perspective, mm -hmm. but a lot of uh, a lot of the stuff for GTA and Minecraft specifically really depends on the developers and how fast they can get new content out. Oh and yeah, yeah, yeah. One yeah. of the one of the things we were really disappointed about when Minecraft Xbox One came out was the fact that the expanded world option wasn't there natively, and they said, "Oh well, we never said it was going to be there at launch. We just said it would be there." So that kind of caused a lot of turmoil because... And it throws a kinks into your planning because you were counting on it being there from the beginning and you had this whole schedule planned out based on that. We had started a project that would inevitably take a total of six people uh, about a day and a half to complete right. in preparation for the Xbox One version being launched. When they launched it, uh, well we couldn't do it because nothing was working properly. Right. So we had to wait and we ended up making a, a separate copy so that we could continue evolving what was going on and mess Based with on things the systems and were actually fiddle with there. things a little bit more. But yeah. that inevitable decision to not include that led to us realizing that Achievement City was something that we could not expand upon until the world got bigger. Because yeah. it, at that point... Uh, Achievement City was fairly unstable, and people have come to realize that Achievement City is kind of temperamental. But uh, <laughs> not not just because of the TNT underneath it. No, nah. <laughs> though I do have to say the PC version of Achievement City lit up like a firecracker and went off perfectly, and only one person got disconnected, so it wasn't <laughs> too bad. But uh, <laughs> it's that, interesting like, that they still haven't put in some sort of dedicated server method. I. Where's LAN? Come on. Yeah, seriously. Where is LAN? I need the LAN. It would make everything so much better. But uh, that initial decision that they were saying, the, that they were saying, oh, you know, we're not going to have it at launch, led to us saying, okay, so if that's going to happen like that, 
then we're going to need to build outside of Achievement City, which Jeff didn't necessarily like because it's one of those things that, of course, we want to keep everything in, in central Achievement City. We want to keep all this world in, encased into one nice little bubble. But it doesn't necessarily work out that way. And yeah. if we take things elsewhere, then we can have a fresh start and build completely and not be limited to either space or uh, functionality. Right. Say there's so much redstone and so many paintings in Achievement City that you can't put up a lot. And if we were to build, say, oh, I don't know, Halloween with the spooky mansion there, it would have been nigh impossible to get everything to work because there wouldn't have been enough paintings and decorations. And redstone and, just and all the materials that you broke. need, it's already in Achievement City. So yeah. when we sit down and we were thinking, it's like, okay, hey, we should build Halloween, uh, which came about, I think, at the beginning of September, mm -hmm. which was scary because we needed to record Halloween a certain amount of time before Halloween because we were going to lose everybody to laser team yeah. around that time. So we had to, we, I think we had about uh, two weeks to build all of Halloween, Ooh. which encompassed about 30 hours of our time between. Yeah, because that set was massive. Uh, we had me, Matt, Jeremy, Lindsay, and then we brought in Jeremy's fiance, Kat, and my girlfriend, Valerie. Mm -hmm. So that was all six of us working to finish everything. And we also built from home as well. So it was a tremendous task to finish. Not to mention the fact that we also had to figure out a way to get everybody the Halloween texture pack because only half of Achievement Hunter had it. Hey. And we were gonna be recording it in September. So yeah. they weren't going to launch the new Halloween pack until the end of October. Uh, which led man. to Jeremy's barrels of vinegar and the fact that the message kept popping up. Yeah. But uh, Matt and I figured out that if we uh, gave our home consoles that have our IPs and all that nonsense on it and our static and everything to two of them and then gave our gamer tags to the other two then we could have all six people. So in that Minecraft Let's Play, there's somebody playing on Matt's Xbox and somebody playing on Matt's account. And then there's somebody playing on my Xbox and <laughs> somebody playing on my account. Interesting. It was uh, a balancing act that made us incredibly tense. And Matt and I sat there the entire time nervously watching everybody play to make yeah, sure just... nothing went wrong. But that's one thing that I find interesting about Achievement Hunter as a group project. It's always fun to see those guys, you guys, take the technical limitations that the game gives you and turn them on its ear and figure out what you can do creatively with the tools that you're given. Yeah, a lot of people consistently say that we should move to the PC version of Minecraft because it's, it's better, it's more stable, it's so-and-so and such and such. But the problem is, it's so much easier to, one, record on the Xbox version, two, most of the people playing prefer the console controls, mm -hmm. and three, it's a familiar setting that everybody's used to, where putting on the shaders and everything for Fishing Jamboree Part 3 was nice and all. A lot of people were like, oh, that's a really cool thing. But at the same Where's time, my Minecraft? that's not Achievement City. Right. That's not the real Achievement City at all. That's... A copy. It's a farce. It's a. It's, it's, I'm from it's the so internet. Insane. I hate chain. That's more than true, but yeah. at the same time, it kind of makes sense. I mean, uh, case in point, when someone in Friends moved from one apartment to another apartment, it's just like, all right, everything's thrown <laughs> out of proportion. Where's the kitchen? Where's the living room? Where's the bedroom? Where's we the need an establishing shot the again. Where's the map in my head that I already right. had? Yeah. So it's one of those things that people know Achievement City and its map so well that when you start messing with things, they're like, hey, uh, we don't understand where everything is and it gets to become uh, kind of a confusing thing. That's why for, say, uh, Legends of the Hidden Tower and Halloween, we were releasing the Let's Build stuff around the same time as the Let's Play uh -huh. so that people could see the grandiose scale of everything and kind of get their heads around it first before we take them into this brand new world right into the actual game itself where 
they might be a little disoriented. Instead, now here's the chance to experience the world just a little bit, wrap your brain around it, and then suddenly, okay, now we're in the games. Plus, they get to see how everything works as intended. Yeah. So when the main six guys come in and blow everything up, then they can say, well, hey, if they had just done this... Yeah, at was least it was tested. <laughs> everything, everything, everything is tested. <laughs> I think I, that was one of my favorite things that Matt ever posted was the little Minecraft hidden message thing. Did you see that? Yes, yes. He's just like, I wonder if people are going to notice this. And it's just like, he's he had it set for about a week. He's just like, all right, all three of these are going to be like this. And they're all going to notice. And someone's like... Hey, did you do something with that? And, and that was it. It was just like, yep. the joke went, and he's just like, oh, damn. Well, I mean, you know, the thing is, when you make something like that, it's like um, the first Easter egg that was ever made was something uh, in an any or I think it was like an Atari 1600 game or was, NES uh, game. It was Atari 2600. It was the game Adventure, and it was the yeah. creator's name in a secret room. That you had to go through the wall for. There's yep. no indication that it's there. So it's you all... kind of have to breadcrumb them if you really want them to find it. It's true. But that being said, eh, whatever. You live, you learn. Sometimes you have to point it out yourself. A joke so funny that you had to point it out yourself. Yeah, it happens. <laughs> so put a little, uh, nice little end cap on this conversation for us. What is it like working for Achievement Hunter? Uh, it's chaos. It's madness. Uh, the amount of content that we have to go through and have to produce in a singular week uh, I think we put a lot of TV shows and movies to shame with how much we can produce, pump out, and uh, eject to the world as quickly as we can. If you and take a still look at keep quality, it, it, it's one of those things that if you take a look at the allotted time that you see in a week from Achievement Hunter, that doesn't necessarily mean that that's all that was recorded, that was done that week. That week's of video is. Those are all that's like, that's how much content you guys can consume from right. us. But that doesn't mean that it's like, we have to balance all the editing on top of all the recording and then all of the recording on top of all the personal stuff. And if somebody's missing, then we have to figure out how to work around that. There was a couple verses that we did where people were like, hey, this is lazy because such and such isn't in there. And they should have, you know, it's like, Ray just picked up the thing and he got it. Well, Ray didn't just pick it up and take it. Ray was next in line. Right. So naturally, it went to Ray for obvious reasons. And it's not like we could just barge into the laser team set, say, hey, we need Michael and Gavin for about 20 minutes so we can record a versus. They it doesn't quite work like that. On. Yeah. They have important obligations to, you know, they want to make the movie as amazing and as perfect and as funny as humanly possible. So that means that's going to take time and a lot of effort. And we can't disrupt that. While at the same time, we need to make sure that we can manage ourselves. And it becomes yeah. a, a very dangerous balancing act when, say, one person saying, oh, you know, I have an emergency and I have to go and do this, uh, throws a wrench into all the workings. But exactly. I was going to say, that, God forbid somebody actually gets sick. Yeah. You know? There's or a some... lot of times that uh, myself or Lindsay or Matt, because I don't think Jeremy's gotten sick yet. I. No, I don't think Jeremy's gotten sick yet. Matt, Lindsay, and I have all gotten sick, and we just was like, well, you know, sucks. Sucks to yeah. suck. Let's take some DayQuil and uh, keep editing. So yep. if there's... Plug right on through. It's uh, it's not that necessarily just, the best That just means the three of you need to walk into the office tomorrow and just lick Jeremy together. <laughs> that way he'll guaranteed to get sick, he'll know what it's like, and you'll be in the trenches together. There was definitely a point where Jeremy was very, very, uh, he's just like, I need to stay away from Adam because Adam's sick and I don't want to get sick because I have to go home and I'm, I'm going to fly back to Boston. I don't want to fly back to Boston when I'm sick. Yeah. So it They're going to think like... it's Ebola. I've read the news. Uh, <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, I think that's a nice little rounding out point for our program. But before we leave, I've always enjoyed the inside the actor studios method of ending on a questionnaire. So I too have a reappropriated version of the Proust personality questionnaire and it goes a little something like this. Caden, what's your favorite word? My favorite word is probably onomatopoeia. And your least favorite word? Triskaidekaphobia. Dude, that's, that's a mouthful. <laughs> it, what is that? The fear of the number 13. Ah, yes. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, and what sound or noise do you love? Sound or noise? Uh, so I have a bit of a cold. Probably that 
tiny squeak a cat makes when it's playing with a toy that's like a small mouse and it just like bites into it. And it's like that tiny squeak that the cat gets of satisfying crunch. It's like, if this was a real mouse, it'd be dead. <laughs> and what sound or noise do you hate? Uh, let's see. Probably the sound of a original school number two pencil that's been dulled writing on construction paper. That is an oddly specific sound, <laughs> but I can totally see it. Uh, what hero or heroine, no judgments here, do you identify with the most? Oh, I'd like to say Tony Stark, but that's incredibly false. Uh, probably Nightcrawler. And what villain? And what villain? What villain? Oh, that's a whole other question altogether. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd have to say... Probably Sinestro. Really? And uh, what would be your superpower? If you what would my superpower be? Uh, well, I gotta be honest. Professor Xavier's got some pretty sweet powers, so I'll probably take his and or I'll just take Iron Man's suits. Right, right. I Mostly want that. because you can step out of it and stop being the hero at some points. I want that Hulkbuster armor so bad. I, oh, I can't wait to see it in action in the movie. I don't care what the context is, whether they're just testing out the armor, whether they're actually having a knockdown yeah, exactly. fight. Don't care. Just show me Hulk and Iron Man fighting. Of course, oh. Iron Man's never actually beaten Hulk in the Hulkbuster armor, but... Yeah, it doesn't matter. I just want to see him fight. Uh, what would be your super weakness? My super weakness? Mm-hmm. The incredible lack of intelligence of the rest of the planet. <laughs> uh, what turns you on creatively? What gets your wheels going? There's nothing better, <laughs> and I've said this a bunch of times before, there's nothing better than finding the perfect font to go with the video. Finding that perfect font just somehow makes the rest of the entire edit process just click that much more. I see what you mean. You kind of, it's... It's the corner piece in the jigsaw puzzle. Exactly. Once you figure that out, everything else kind of branches out from there, and it, it all makes sense. Precisely. Uh, what turns you off? Uh, technical difficulties. <laughs> what other talent, other than the ones you've obviously been gifted with, do you wish you had? Other talent? I wish I could be able to draw. Yeah. I've, always, I've always admired, like, artists, like... Uh, Valerie's All of the people so in the bay next to you. Yeah, Valerie's an artist, so I'll sit behind her while she's drawing, and it's just like, I want to do that. And uh, watching Patrick Rodriguez draw the uh, Achievement Hunter holiday card was just like, he's like, I need to work on this and just this because right. I have a deadline for it, and I need to get this all done. And watching it go from an idea to a sketch to a finished project and out for sale is just incredible and how the whole artist process works is amazing to me it boggles my mind sometimes not to mention x-ray and vav <sighs> seeing him create that cartoon and watching him do all the sketches and everything was simply incredible and actually getting to see this is like hey I'm drawing the character that you're playing in X-Ray and Vavis. It's like, that, that's me. That's my character. He's like, yeah, that's your character. It's like, that's Bitchin. Just, That's so cool. Exactly. It, that's what I was saying when we were talking about what gets your wheels going. Anything like that, any sort of latching on point, that usually is what gets me going. Someone Seeing else's people, creative idea that yeah. I can... Seeing other people find a creative solution, solution to a problem that it's like... Well, if I was doing it, I would have handled it this way. And seeing other people's solutions to the problem is very interesting to me. Agreed. Agreed 100, 100%. Uh, what, what advice would you give to your 13-year-old self? Uh, spend more time learning how to multi-clip. <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. And what is something that only you do? What is something that only I do? Let's see. Something that only I do. Schedule. <laughs> <laughs> what's your favorite curse word? My favorite curse word? Probably the one that everybody likes the most. The one that's chocolate and fudge coated on the inside. It's the word fuck. Agreed. 
And what, uh, where would you one day like to live? Uh, I actually, to be honest, I really like Austin. It feels a lot like uh, the hometown I never really had. It's yeah. particularly weird, but there's a lot of mom and pop store to it. So it's like, there's an, there's the usual commercial stuff. It's like, there's a Walmart, there's a Target, there's a McDonald's, but there's a lot of, you can only find this here to it. And I, I really point. enjoy that. Yeah, I agree. And if you, our last question here, if you had a choice, how long would it take you to respawn after you died? Uh, probably the Bioshock loading times. Give you a little bit of a quip and then throw you back in the tube and send you back to the world. Fair enough. Fair enough. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that rounds out our program here for today. Uh, I want to thank my special guest, Caden, for coming on. Uh, you can. What is your uh, Twitter handle? My Twitter handle is at ah underscore Caden. And that's been underneath him this whole time. Is there anything else you'd like to plug before we get out of here? Uh, go watch all of the test shows again because they took all of my mental capacity and you should give them the appreciation that they deserve. I couldn't agree with you more, sir. Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching. Uh, you can find the – I'm still working on the audio versions. Bear with me. I swear, hopefully by the beginning of the year, I'll have a solution. I'm really trying to get it up on iTunes, but damn, that shit's hard. Um, let's see. You can find me at Tim Leftwich on Twitter. You've been watching this at, uh, at YouTube.com slash Tim Leftwich. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. And as always, Bye. we'll see you next time. I'm so happy that it worked out like this. I was able to do like a one, two, three. With... Yeah, you mentioned you wanted to do that in the first place, and then it's just like, originally it was going to be all three of us together. Mm -hmm. That would well, have been too clustered and everything, yeah. I mean, the thing, you know, it, the cluster I'm not necessarily worried about is just scheduling that many yeah, people it's, it's true. that are that fucking busy. Like, it's one thing if you guys were kind of all on the same schedule and were working on the same things. Yeah. But you're not even close to doing that.